What's going on, everybody? Today's video, PSA bans another non-paying group submitter. Wow, what is that, three or four now? That's been really publicly known. I've known a few others that are no longer dealers for other reasons out there. But, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. I mean, what do these guys do with the money they're getting charging these guys in advance? Well, let's go ahead and dig into this a little bit here today. I'm going to give you the facts from PSA. That link will be down in the description. I'm going to give you the facts from Ludkin's Collectibles out of the UK who got to say, call themselves PSA UK. I'm going to put that link down in there. We're going to show some of the comments out there. And I invite anybody, because I'm off this Thursday and Friday. If you're from Ludkin's Collectibles, if you submitted PSA through Luckins Collectibles and haven't received it yet. I'm just curious. I want to just ask some basic questions out there to find where the disconnect is. And PSA, I mean, I could probably try to reach out to like Nat Turner out of Collector's Universe or somebody. But this is becoming a big, 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 big problem out there. Um, wow. All right, let's get into this real quick. So this was from PSA, November 4th. Again, link in the description. And I was debating on reading this verbatim, but really not going to hit that because it's going to take me forever to read the one piece. But effective immediately, PSA is dis discontinuing its relationships with Ludkin Collectibles. And in quotation, Ludkins. Ludkins is no longer an authorized PSA dealer or allowed to use the name PSA UK. Interesting, because I never thought, I never knew anything about this to begin with. I mean, for one, I know there's a bunch of group dealers, especially the overseas thing. It would make sense to have like one person out there sending that stuff over to help um, with shipping costs and all the stuff there. So, Lutkins has failed to pay PSA for its services while PSA believes Lutkins has already collected payments from its customers. Again, they, they can't say they have or have not. They believe. Even though PSA has not been paid by Lutkins, all cards that have been received by PSA uh, order September 2022 have been graded and are in PSA's possession. So, as of September 28th, if your order's been there, it's been graded and sitting there at PSA waiting for a payment. I mean, if this is one of your cards, did you pay Ludkins already for this way in advance? Uh, furthermore, PSA offered to return the cards to Ludkins, despite the lack of payments, so that Ludkins could return the cards to their customers, which unfortunately was met with resistance and further demands. I'm sure it's a bunch of legal and litigation and all that kind of fun mumbo-jumbo stuff, but it says, PSA's focus is now determining a safe path to return these cards to their rightful owners without Ludkins' involvement. It's all this with Mark's cards. I believe graded gems as well, too, or grade gems, something like that as well. I'm trying to remember the stories. I know the Mark's card one because that's like the most famous right now. Unfortunately, Lutkins has not shared any details with PSA and the cards uh, on which cards belong to which customers. So I'm not too sure of the whole legal jumbo here if they're allowed to share that information. I mean, it would just be the right thing to get consent from your customers saying, listen, I need your consent to release your information to PSA on which cards is yours. Easy, easy solution, just for my thoughts. I mean, if I was a customer, like, dude, I'm giving you full consent. I'll sign it. I'll get it notarized, whatever it needs to be. Release my information to PSA so I can get my cards. And as it goes through this, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but PSA is not going to charge the customer for the grading fee. Now, you will have to pay for return shipping. That's kind of fair in a way. I mean, I don't see an issue with that at all. Uh, let's see here. To return the cards to the correct customers in the safest way possible. I like that. I mean, that's a good thing. Send them directly to the customer. Let's knock out the middleman piece. And I'm not saying all group submitters are evil out there. Okay, I know that's going to be a conversation. People are like, oh, group submitters all suck. They really don't. There were guys before the pandemic that were big group submitters. Phenomenal. Um, I don't want to like 
promote anybody out there onto it. Most of you guys hear me talk at least about three of the guys throughout different streams. But they do a great job. They've been doing it for a long time frame. Now, I will say now, because of these guys now getting stuck with guys not paying for their submissions, whether it's just bad grades, cards have fallen, or whatever, they are requiring payment up front now. Before they never did, it was a straight trust factor. And two of the guys I knew pretty well, or I had a friend that was like really knew them well enough that I'd be like, okay, he knows them good enough to trust this guy, and I never had issues with them. So it all depends. I'm not going to, like I said, not all group submitters are horrible people out there. They're all not going to fail and all this other stuff out there. So these are all separate, isolated uh, situations. It does make you think when somebody new opens up, are they going to be credible? Why not go with a guy that's been around for five, ten years? You know, is it because of new height? Do you offer me a deal? I don't know. Uh, this just talks about more of the legal jumbo. And here it is here, the big thing, as our number one goal is to return cards to their owners. PSA will not be asking less and Lufkin's customers to pay again for grading service. They will only be uh, asked to cover shipping. Looking ahead, we are making changes to increase the confidence of PSA and our dealer program to collectors in the UK and around the globe. If you're a customer of Luckins and believe that you have cards that have not been yet returned, Google Forms link, or you can email them so much. So PSA puts this out. I mean, you know, it's a shot. Shot heard, you know. They don't want to dampen their company onto it. They've been trying to, from what this is saying, getting this payment. Hey, we'll send you the cards. Just make us payments or whatever their proposed plan is. So as I'm going through all this, there was an, uh, a link somewhere along the way that I found. So Luckins had a face group uh, post as well. So let's talk about this here. And this is Luckins UK collectibles, okay? It is with great disappointment PSA decided to cease its relationship with Luckins Collectibles, blah, blah, blah. They give you this whole big, long story. So, somewhere along the way, Luckins has believed that, you know, PSA UK is basically going to get bought out by PSA, and they weren't going to receive any money for the company long as they got... And I'll I'll read that part verbatim, but it, I think if it was worded, and I had to think of it right offhand, it was something like they got some kind of job position to them guaranteed. So when you read this, it, it, there's a lot of stuff in here that just didn't jive offhand. And the first piece is is that if I'm a group submitter, I would one want the money up front from anybody that I don't know or trust, you know. I mean, there, there's very few people out there in the card community, I would tell you, that I would trust off bat. Yeah, you know, them saying they would pay me down, pay me whenever it comes in, or if I send them a message, hey, can you send this? They get it to me as quick as they can. They can be in a meeting, whatever it may be. But I would require all the money up front. Now, we all know with during the pandemic, we know PSA was going to shut down. Anybody that's been around for a while knew that was going to be like a year. So here's my thought. I knew they were going to be shut down for a year, even though PSA, they claim in here, was making promises only to be shut down for a short while. Anyone out there knew it was going to be a while because we knew how long bulk was already to begin with. They didn't have the personnel. We knew it was going to be, they'd have to get more space, more graders, more shippers, all that stuff across the board. Why not? If you're collecting all that money, put it into a business savings account so you don't spend the customer's money, except for grading fees. And if it takes a year or whatever, maybe do some type of giveaway. Or if the cards are to be upcharged, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. But if the cards were going to be upcharged, you know, you can take a vote if you have a Facebook group. Hey, guys, you know, for the past year, PSA is starting to pay for this stuff. We put the money into account, acquired some interest, roughly X amount of thousand. It could be two, three thousand dollars. We could do one, a couple options here that we thought about. We want to leave it up to, you know, the vote. You know, one could have been like, hey, we'll pay the any upcharge fees that we don't win against PSA on the upcharge out of this, you know, we're going to call it slush fund or interest fund. 
Uh, two, we could do some type of giveaway, buy some wax packs, whatever it may be, or we can give free grading uh, certificates away out of it so somebody can get something out of it. And, you know, if you're going to do some type of giveaway with it, you could be like, hey, for every X hundred dollars you spent, you get a name in a random and, you know, top X amount of people maybe get like a free pack of select football hobby or something like that. It, there's so many ways it could have went around it. Because then your customer like, wow, dang, that's cool. He's kind of taking care of us. I have a chance at this. Or you could get, you know, I don't know how much you would, you know, how much you took in volume-wise and money, how much the percentage would have been. I mean, just imagine if you had like a half million dollars in grading costs out there. In over a year, how much that could accumulate, even with the, some of the lower 3% interest rates or whatever it may be out there. You got a little bit of money and you could have went out there and i mean i'm not saying it had to be football it could be soccer i'm just thinking it's out there in uh uh the uk soccer is big out there you could have went out and bought a bunch of uh cases of say like tops chrome bundesliga the newest stuff coming out and say hey, top x amount of people you get you know one entry for x amount of dollars spent and top x amount of people are going to get a free freaking hobby box i mean people would be ecstatic that's really cool they, they looked out for us just my thoughts onto that. You know, it's always about how can you, you know, make something good out of a bad situation, especially, you know, anybody, like I said, anybody's been around for a while, new PSA was going to be down for a little bit. It was going to be longer in a couple months. All right, back to what they're saying here. UK underwent uh, Brexit, which removed the UK from the European Union. Luckin Collectibles opened an office in France to allow, it just talks about a lot of the different stuff onto it. A bunch of uh, more business-related, government-related stuff. COVID. Uh, PSA shifted from public to private entity throughout the diligence period. PSA continued to take new orders. They just talked about they started taking orders again without during the backlog, and they weren't great in the backlog. So people still sitting there losing money, stuff like that. There, they didn't adhere or meet their obligation. The turnaround times, and it was all estimated. When you use the word estimate, it could be before or after. I mean, that that's the whole issue. It's estimated. It's not guaranteed. If they would have used the word guaranteed, that would have been a different story on to it. Uh, talks about following the privatization. PSA announced decided to upcharge all customers based on the market value at the time of grading. This was by a dishonest approach to increase the revenue on cards that had been with the company long before the 2020 surging demand. All right. I don't know the uh, the truth behind that. It, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But what it says here, they fought some of the upcharges every step of the way. In many cases, the upcharges were reduced in favor of the customers. You guys know, and I know some of the guys that have uh, seen a lot of the videos or known why I sent a PSA. I should have been upcharged a hell of a lot during the pandemic. Especially stuff that was sitting there forever. Let's just use the 89 Griffey Don Russ rookie that I got a PSA 10 on. At the time, that card was like $1,200 when they graded it. It was $8.88 to grade, max value $199. No upcharge. I, I've only received... And you guys quote me wrong. Joey, you probably know too. Was it two or three upcharges max in the last three years for myself? Or for any of my orders out there? I mean, and those were due to the fact that I sent them in when they reopened. Planned on getting a PSA 9. Got a PSA 10. With the understanding that if I got a PSA 10, I was going to be upcharged. There's some bigger guys that I help them with their submissions and everything. And they, you know, get submitted and everything, go to them. And they had the same mentality. Like, hey, dude, I know if I get a, a high grade on this, I'm going to pay the upcharge. So I kind of find it hard that they're going to upcharge after, I mean, I probably had about 30 cards that should have been upcharged from the pandemic. Easily. Easily. Not one of them got, up, they got the upcharge rate on to it at all. And the couple that did was because they were mailed in after they reopened at a, like, express level or above, knowing that if we got a 10 on to it, we were going to have to pay the higher fee. But my thought was, why well, pay the higher fee if I get a 9 on this card, when I can just pay it for this and just wait a couple extra weeks? So, I, I don't know. 
I'm really curious on to that because I'd like to hear, you know, from either organization, you know, the truth behind that, because I, I know plenty of other guys that had hundreds and thousands of cards out there from either before the pandemic or before the shutdown. And I can't think of anybody that got an upcharge unless they, you know, submitted it because and knew they were going to get an upcharge somewhere down the road. Just because prices boomed. I don't know. It kind of seems a little sketchy there, you know, on to it that, you know, somebody there is not telling the truth or, hey, how the heck did all of us, you know, in that I know of not get charged for that stuff? Really weird. Really weird circumstance there. All right. Uh, it says, the what does it say, Luckins or LC has tirelessly fought for our customer when PSA uh, experienced immense change. PSA has a strong line citing the business, blah, blah, blah. We'll just keep going through here. Uh, okay, eventually they both formed a partnership you've come to know as PSA UK. This was a solution to moving forward, navigating rough waters together, and growing towards a new future. PSA provided ample intent for LC to continue operations under the safeguard of a brighter future. It was a path for PSA and Luckins to mutually provide the highest level of service possible to the customers. PSA acknowledged their, their distressed financial situation. So this is where it kind of, you know, makes me think here. Maybe PSA was trying to work them on a payment program or something like that there. But if you collected the money up front for these, minus any upcharges, you should be able to pay for the orders. That That's my thought process onto this. So why, I mean, I understand that there's like some kind of crazy economic financial situation going on. But what happened with the people's money? Did you use it to, you know, keep afloat, keep in business? No. You, you're supposed to put that money aside. If you wanted to have, like, you know, some other ballpark figure where you were charging an extra dollar card to cover or whatever, that would be a different story. But, I mean, wow. It, it just shocks me to no end on to this stuff anymore. Uh, PSA UK continued to hemorrhage money to maintain minimal levels of staff. All while operating on the impression PSA UK's full book of business was being transitioned to PSA's full ownership. During this period, uh, this is the owner that talking about this, or CEO, whatever, I don't know what title it is. We're just going to call him owner. Luckins himself. Mr. Luckins. Sold off personal assets, including his collection, to keep the company afloat. Mind you, the deal with PSA UK did not include any cash payout. This is what I was talking about before. The entire company was offered a PSA in exchange for a full-time leadership role with PSA UK. It talks about he sacrificed everything, achieved hopes to continue providing trustable, collectible services, those of us overseas, all that stuff onto it. The turnaround times were not bet by PSA, which had full visibility into our financial health, which is kind of where my big thing is. If you got the money up front, I'm just going to throw a number out. If I was charging $20 a card and PSA said, hey, I'm taking 18 of it, you get the $2 to help with shipping or whatever cost or, you know, help with your staff, whatever it may be for bills out there, whatever it could be. Why? I just don't get it. Why was it just not paid for? I mean, you could, there's all kinds of ways to figure that out. I just don't get it, I mean, from a financial aspect. But you'd have to look at financial records and everything else onto it. But as a customer, if I paid you for your service up front, where's my card? It's already been graded. PSA is saying that card's been sitting there graded. All orders from September 20, 2022 and forward have been graded. Are waiting payment. Why have they not been paid for? Is it because there's some kind of legal you are upset because... You're not becoming some direct leadership role in PSA UK. They don't want it now. I mean, I don't get it. It just really, it upsets me that we see this stuff and we have, you know, you see both sides of the story and you're like, who's here to really be at fault or blame? You know, it, it just, it's just really bad when this stuff comes out and it just brings a tarnish both upon the hobby itself, these companies, you know, people get disgruntled. Hmm. But 
Prior to PSA's announcement today, the full customer list was offered with the uh, line item details, so PSA may ship directly to each customer. This offer went unanswered, which it doesn't make sense. It said prior to PSA's announcement today, they offered him this. When you say you offered him that, you didn't send it to him. You made him an offer like, hey, we'll give you this list for this. It's kind of like a quad, quid quad pro. I'll give you this, you give me this, you know, type deal. I don't know. I'd like to know exactly what was said onto that whole thing because where does this lie at? We have people who entrusted a company as a middleman may have paid up front. We're going to get to some of the comments below onto this and they still don't have their stuff. All right, so I was going through these comments. They're doing what they can. We'll be reinstating all client documents. Da, 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 da. Any orders to P.O. Box, we'll go back to customers Monday. Any orders to officers start next week. And I was trying to just scrim through some of this stuff. In no way along this process did they keep their customers informed. Hey, this situation's going on. Same thing with Mark's cards. Card Collector 2 didn't put anything out until after he got went down to PSA and got all of his cards. Why not let people know about this stuff up front if there's issues? Keep your customers informed. They're keeping your lights on. You're not keeping your lights on. That grading company is not keeping your lights on. Those customers are paying you for a service as a middleman to another place. Keep them informed, the whole process. I can tell you for many examples outside the sports card industry uh, through my times with the Army, working in a big, huge distribution company. Keep your people informed. Don't let them find this out and just be disgruntled. Let them jump to conclusions. Um, trying to see here. You need to come out and treat your customers how they deserve to be treated. Proper answers, proper action plan will enable people to get their cards back. PSA has got nothing to do with it. You ballsed up your cash flow beyond resolve and now owe people a lot of money. You've got to take responsibility for it and stop shifting the blame. I can see why people were saying this. I honestly can. You were ta you were taking submissions on last week and I know my card sat in your P.O. box. So, yeah. Love how this was released in the middle of the night. If Barney sends everybody's cards back that are not with PSA and everybody ends up with their cards back, it will demonstrate he's absolutely telling the truth. I'm inclined to believe all what he said. Everybody's going to have their own opinions on this. Uh, D, this is the main reason PSA has gone down. Grading a 10, even when it shouldn't be, gives them the right to upcharge according to the market. They've already artificially inflated. Again, when we bounce back to that statement, I've not been upcharging anything that was from the pandemic. Now, granted, if I had said like a Zion NT freaking RPA in a bulk, common sense is you're going to get up charged. But at the time that I submitted that in the guidelines as of a PSA 9, if it was under that value and I knew if it got a 10, it could go over, you should know that. Or it should have been explained to you by that middleman. Great, I have 100 cards with Lubkins out PSA. I want my cards back. There's the popcorn thing. I'm surprised you'll see a lot more popcorns in this. But here it is. But invoice for PSA and paid. Easier to blame PSA and telecustomer still being graded. I assume in reality it's during the window of no submissions. That's right. I mean, it's just bad, bad. And, you know, this is what people are seeing from these two statements across the board. There's one on here I'm trying to find. It wouldn't let me, like, highlight this stuff, so... Somebody says it looks like PSA is completely at fault because basically they saw this happen and they let it continue happen type deal. Same thing the Mark's cards. But I think more than likely they were trying to work with them with some kind of payment solution and get these people their cards back to keep this out and make some kind of plan and approach the public with it. But that's just my thoughts. My thoughts on to it. And this just shows how well great Jim handled the same exact situation. Cash flow fell through the floor when PSA closed to new submissions, but then but they didn't steal customers' money to pay themselves like you did. Dang. 
ghosting customers, not keeping customer or not keeping customer funds for grading ring uh, for a grading ring fence, not hedging against. Wow, I mean, just these are some ruthless comments on here. There it is. Yeah, it's not great news indeed. I paid Luckins twelve hundred dollars or twelve hundred pounds. Sorry, pounds, guys. <laughs> Plus in fees up front for a submission of close to hundred cards, which at the time was not an issue. But my, but since my submission in March twenty one, a lot has changed for me financially, and the return of those cards was going to be huge lifeline for me. I have a third child. Da da da. You know, talks about what's going on with them. They, this person saying they paid up front. Great, Jim. They got all theirs back. Great, Jim. Paid all my money right away. Da 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 da. Um. Let's see. No, Barney, you took the customer sub cash, sent the cards, and now running off with the cash instead of paying PSA, making a lot of money in the progress. See the prize. They have no money. He had to sell his own personal collection for the company to continue to even operate. Do we have proof of that? Barney has his eBay account. He's only sold 511 items there. Most cheap stuff. Have you seen this person? Maybe he, he bragged and showed off cars and cards. I don't know. Oh, that's messed up, yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's see here. There was a couple others when I was scrolling through here. It, it mentioned that they paid up front to this grading company. So, without keeping this video going super, super long, in the end, if anybody works... Luckins Collectibles wants to come on here live and explain their whole side with me asking some of these questions like, did you charge up front? Did they pay the customers pay up front? What happened to this money type questions? You're more than welcome. Reach out to me and I'll put, we'll come on. I mean, we don't have to do it live. We can just do a regular Zoom and I'll record it. No big deal. If you want to go live with it and have the people in the chat, we can do that too. Um, I'll try to reach out to PSA. I don't think PSA is going to want to come on here. I mean, we're not a huge channel i mean was it like 5600 subscribers now so i'll see if they'll come on maybe be able to shed some light or talk about it briefly with the same well i can't ask them what happened to you know the money over there but you know can they actually confirm that they've gotten these cards graded through this order you know are they working through what's their plan other than you know trying to get some list what else can they do and if you are a customer of luckins you paid up front you can leave a comment below if you want, uh, or if you want to come on in overtime, or heck, I'll come out live on a Thursday or Friday be, uh, with overtime early if I have to, just to talk to people that have submitted through Luckins to see where you're at through the process. What have you heard? Was this a shotgun blast to everybody? Like, oh my gosh, we never heard anything about it. But I'd like to try to see if we can get some resolve to this, you know, or hear some more in-depth stuff. Because we all know comments onto this stuff, some of it could be fabricated, some of it could not be, you know, people that submitted, it could be haters, whatever it may be out there. But from my personal opinion out there, if you collected that money up front, it should have been stashed for the grading fee. You worrying about how to pay your employees to stay afloat should have been something completely offhand. I mean, if you had to, you know, shut down, tell your customers, been like, dudes, our business can't stay afloat. I still have all your money for grading fees. I'm going to do this out of the basement of my house. As the stuff comes in, it may take longer to come back to you because I have to work a full-time job, do whatever, but I will get your stuff back to you, I promise. You know, it could have been something like that there. But, you know, it just don't, it does not sound right because PSA is saying they have cards graded through September 28th, 22 that were submitted to them. They're just waiting for payment. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think of the whole thing? Put down in the comments like always. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until later, we might have a follow-up video on this if some people want to come on and uh, do like a quick overtime where we can put something together. Don't have to be live. We can just do it uh, pre-recorded off of Zoom, and I can just, you know, 
take bits and pieces out, give you guys pre-approval before I release the video, to make sure nothing's like spliced, worded wrong, and stuff like that there. Uh, same if I'm going to send an email out to PSA to see maybe somebody will come on and talk. I highly doubt that'll happen. Uh, I want to offer, like I said, the same thing. Look, Lutkin's collectibles out there uh, in the UK. More than welcome to do the same thing. Hear your whole thing, but be ready for the hard questions on to because there's a lot of stuff that don't make sense on to it um, with it. And because people are going to want to know, uh, you know, where are they paid? Why? Where's their money at for these cards? All right, everybody. Take care. Have a good one. See y'all next video.